Hey students, welcome back for another Students Talk. Now normally I would do some kind of intro right here, uh, but my friend Joel recently just gave me a little Debbie Christmas tree cake, which I believe to be one of the superior desserts uh, that you can have around this time of the season. So I'm going to let Joel talk while I finish off this Christmas tree cake in front of you yes. and encourage you to go buy yourself one. Yes, Joel? they are absolutely delicious. Uh, so we've been talking the last week about what you guys can do this year for Christmas, kind of challenging you all to do something good for someone else. Um, and so one of the things I talked about with our high school students out here at Hebron on Sunday night was that one of the ways you can kind of tell if you aren't being grateful around this time of year is that when you go to a family Christmas, whether it's the one on Christmas morning with your parents or it's the one at your grandparents' house or your aunt or uncles or your cousins, whatever. Um, <laughs> it, it, yeah, yeah what, whatever. I know all families are different about where you go for, mm -hmm. for Christmas, but wherever you go, if you open your gifts and you walk away feeling like disappointed or you walk away feeling like something was unfair, then chances are you probably have missed the point of Christmas, all right? Because the point of Christmas is not for you to receive things that you love and things that you want. It is a perk of Christmas. I think we can all uh, honestly admit that, and that is fine. Um, but if you walk away disappointed, then what that means is that means that the only thing you look forward to with Christmas is getting what you want. Um, and that's like a complete and total obvious way to know, like, okay, maybe I need to reevaluate um, how I treat people, how, how generous I am, and what I care about when it comes to Christmas. Because what's more important than the gifts that you get is spending time with your family um, and also giving gifts to people. Um, if you have someone in your family who is a really good gift giver, um, that person in our family is Alicia. Uh, she's like a phenomenal gift giver, um, and it's always meaningful. It's always um, something that is sentimental at the same time. I mean, it, it's always like an incredible gift. Um, and the the looks on people's faces when, when they open the gifts that she comes up with is always absolutely priceless because of how generous that she is and how much time and thought that she puts into it. You know, it's not just, oh, you know, sometimes we get people gift cards, but mm -hmm. we try to we try to get out of that because uh, that, that becomes pretty easy. But there are some people who legitimately just want gift cards. Yeah, and so, for sure. um, you know, that, that, that's, that's different too. So I just want to encourage you this Christmas season that if you feel that way, maybe take a step back or two and reevaluate your priorities, reevaluate what you care about. Um, and I think we've all been there. I remember when I was a kid and I was in middle school and on my grandma's Christmas, uh, she got me underwear for Christmas yeah. and all my cousins had like these toys and I was like, I got underwear. Uh, it was, that's, a, that's, that's very kind of her. It was very kind <laughs> of her. got me underwear, but also at the same time, I can, yes. you can see it being slightly disappointing to a younger Joel. Yeah, and I, did, I didn't, you know, I was younger and I'm just saying don't make the same mistake that I did of being disappointed. Instead, fake that you love the gift, even if it is like underwear mm -hmm. and uh, because you still have a grandma who's giving you gifts, you know, it's true. Uh, you still have family who's there and who loves you. There's a lot more things important than, than what you get for Christmas. So, um, yeah. yeah, and I think that's a lot of what we're talking about in this whole Merry Christmas to me series is just that idea that like <clears throat> our immediate reactions are uh, our, our selfish desire that kind of lives in within all of us at some points. I mean, it really, like, we have to take an active approach to try to say, listen, I'm not going to fall into being negative. You guys know it, right? There, it is always easier to be negative about a situation than it is to be positive about a situation, right? If something happens, like something happens within your family or something happens, whatever, it's always easier to say, like, well, it's somebody else's fault and this is the worst thing in the world and I, it's, they totally just hate me and whatever. It's always harder to give people the benefit of the doubt, um, but we need to do that, like, especially around Christmas time, we need to think um, yeah, I mean, put yourself in their shoes, that old golden rule thing, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Anyway, we're getting off track. But um, for me, uh, I also have a, uh, another piece of wisdom slash advice uh, for your Christmas, which is in, in relation to gift giving. Um, I know some people in your lives have very specific things that they want, they make a list, you get a thing from the list. Success! Um, but don't pick, pick at least one person who you know who would appreciate it and, and Get them something that is not store-bought, right? Make them a thing, draw them a thing, do it in whatever form of art you're used to. If you have a 3D printer, like 3D print somebody a thing, or like, like just spend some work on somebody. Because there are people who won't, who won't necessarily appreciate it, but like if your mom is anything like my mom, 
She doesn't want like a desk organizer or a phone charger or a, like she doesn't want like some twenty dollar thing off a shelf somewhere. Like she wants something that means something. You know what I mean? And so uh, yeah, take an opportunity, uh, you know, when you can, to find somebody in your life who wants something that means something, and then get them something, uh, get them or make them something that they'll really appreciate. You know, and you will you will see in doing that that you are prouder of that gift than you are of any gift that you bought. That's what I always find with those. It's like if I put some real effort into like a project for someone, I'll, I'll, I will legitimately care how they respond to it. You know what I mean? You're like watching them open the present and you're like trying to be sly about it. You're like, oh, did that? And then you like see that look on your face and it's just ultimately so much more rewarding than like I earned $10 and I spent it on a Burger King gift card and I gave it to my cousin that I don't like, right? So make somebody something, do something um, that is more than just trading money for goods and then handing them to people this Christmas. Yeah. All right. Well, um, those are a couple more, a uh, couple more Christmas tidbits uh, for you guys that fit within our Merry Christmas to Me series. Uh, but another thing that we do, kind of as a series, uh, every week on this podcast, is talk about lesser-known Bible characters, or under the under the under the name, who's that Bible character? If you're familiar with Pokemon from the late '90s, early 2000s. I didn't watch it. I wasn't allowed. You were not, is it because they were monsters? I, I don't know. I just wasn't allowed. All right. Well, I stopped asking questions. Fair enough. All right. Well, anyway, um, who's that Bible character? And in the lens of Christmas, we wanted to go uh, to a similar character to the one that we actually talked about in the last student's talk. Uh, last student's talk, uh, we talked about Simeon, uh, who uh, Mary and Joseph run into whenever they get to the temple in Luke 2. And so we're going to continue on and meet the next character um, in that story who's named Anna. So Joel, what can you tell us about Anna from Luke 2? Yes, uh, Anna is considered a prophet, um, and she um, had lived with her husband seven years after their marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84. So most likely she was a widow pretty much her entire life. Mm -hmm. uh, they were not married very long before he died, and what she did as a widow is she basically just lived at the temple and worshipped all the time. That's what the Bible tells us about her in Luke to 36 through 38 and so this is what it says it says there was also a prophet anna the daughter of penuel of the tribe of asher she was very old she had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. she never left the temple but worshiped night and day fasting and praying coming up to them at that very moment she gave thanks to god and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of jerusalem so she kind of did something very similar to what Simeon did. She goes up to Mary and Joseph, uh -huh. and she says, like, this is the Son of God, and he is going to bring redemption to Jerusalem. And so, you you know, we talked about on Sunday, um, uh, you know, you talked in the last couple of weeks about how uh, Mary and Joseph, you know, they, they had to do uncomfortable things during this season. Uh -huh. um, and one of the things that probably brought them comfort was when they went to the temple to consecrate Jesus, having... Simeon and Anna, two people they did not know, come up to them and be like, yep, that's the Son of God. Um, that must have made them feel good that all of the crap that they had gone through was worth it. So. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, for sure. So Anna, another, and some of you probably have friends who are named Anna. It's a Bible name. You can tell them now. Like, they can find their name in the Bible. And Luke 2, talking about a prophet, a prophetess, I guess it's called either, it goes either way. Um, but yeah, in Luke 2. So, uh, that is, uh, or who's that Bible character for today? Uh, Joel, what do Hebron students need to know as we move toward wrapping up this year? Yes, so this Wednesday night uh, for middle school, we're back here. Doors open at 6.30 like always. We'll be doing Christmas uh, games uh, again, um, and, and we're going to bring back teaching in small groups. Probably not going to have worship uh, as we get closer to Christmas, uh, but I'm excited to do some of the same things we did last week, maybe a little bit more fun. We're not having... Christmas tree cakes because you guys ate all of them except for the one that I gave to Roger. Um, and so I'm excited. That's middle school this uh, this Wednesday and then high school. We're back at the Heilman's house. We only have two more Sundays. Um, and then I think it's just this Wednesday and next Wednesday. So we're coming down to the end and then we're taking a two-week break. So middle school, that means we meet the 8th and the 15th. Um, and then high school, that means we meet the 12th and the 19th. Um, and then we take two weeks off. So um, yeah. Yeah, that's what's going on. Up. Nice. Um, yeah. For the Lakeside Park students, uh, we are uh, meeting on the 12th also, where you're wearing your Christmas pajamas uh, to church, which is always fun. Always like like a nice, comfortable night. People come in all 
bundled up. And uh, so yeah, Merry Christmas PJs. Uh, we'll have some snacks and stuff like we always do. Play some games. Good stuff. Um, and then on the 19th, we're going full on Christmas party. Um, so that'll be a blast. We are uh, breaking out all kinds of festivities and games and chances to kind of run around the building and, and uh, yeah, still learn a little bit and all that fun stuff. So Christmas party um, is coming up. Uh, and then we uh, have the same thing. Yeah, we're off on the 26th and the in the first or second or yeah yeah 26 and second uh we aren't going to meet uh, so that'll give you guys plenty of time for family time or to focus on yourself um focus on getting caught up with that school work that you didn't get turned in or whatever else you need to do this holiday season and then we'll see you back uh on january 9th uh january 9th i think we're doing a nerf wars in the middle school and doing uh uh, what's it called? The bazooka ball. Bazooka ball in high school, which nice. is awesome. If you haven't done bazooka ball before, you will love it. It's a blast. Uh, so I think we're doing that whenever uh, we get back. Joel, can we give them an update on the Students Talk podcast as a whole today? Just yeah, like, like in preparation. Yes, yes. Right. So we are coming down to the end of the Students Talk podcast. And we are. We're coming toward the end of this semester. Yeah. yeah. And so we have decided, as we get toward the end, that it, like I think it's time. I think yes. it's time. This, uh, yeah, this, this podcast served an awesome purpose um, for a long time. It was a part of this arc as we kind of came out of COVID, because this is our, our third semester doing the podcast. We've done, goodness, close to 50 of them by now. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, yeah, and so uh, it served a great purpose and helped, helped keep a lot of people engaged through that season. But right now, I mean, <clears throat> we're seeing a lot of you are back at student ministry. You know what I mean? We're seeing you every week. Um, and so we're feeling like that it might be a time to kind of put this on pause, not to say that it'll never, like something like this will never ever happen again, but kind of take a pause and, and spend a little bit more time focused on, uh, yeah, some of those other interactions. So, yeah, yeah, we're sad to see it move on, but I think it's, it's time. Yeah, I think it's a good thing. I think it's time. Um, and if you are hearing this and saying to yourself, oh no, whatever shall we do? I really want something like this to be back. Then talk to us about it, right? Because if we hear from a few people and, you know, it, at the very least, we can provide you with a resource of like other Christian podcasts. Because yeah. there are other people who do this every single week and, are, and do it really, really well. And so we want to equip you with that if you feel like um, that's going to help you. And if you want to just sit down with Joel or I for 20 minutes once a week and we can do a podcast and, yep. you know, have some coffee or do whatever and <laughs> just chat. We can do that too. So, uh, yeah, if you're saying to yourself, oh, man, I would like that to continue in some way, then talk to us and we will see it continue um, in some way, but, but likely not in the Wednesday format that you're used to. So, Correct. yes. Yeah, so that is, uh, yeah, that's, that's coming around the bend. So we will have another one of these next week, um, and then we will kind of sign off and, and fade into oblivion on the YouTube channel for a while and, and uh, get back to doing stuff in person, which we're excited about. So. Yeah, yeah, it's been great to get back in person. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I think on that uh, less, than, less than exciting note, it's good, it's good stuff, it's yeah. good stuff. We're happy for it. Uh, and on that note, um, I think we, were, we will conclude Students Talk for today. So great to talk to you guys. We'll see you in person here soon.